Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This is the second video on the chapter one, and this is the uh, new videos which have been uh, which have been made for the 2023 syllabus uh, for next year for O level biology 5090. Now, first, let's discuss the functions of the nucleus. The structure is a double membrane. The nuclear envelope is made up of two membranes: outer nuclear and inner nuclear membrane. And it's got these nuclear pores in it. Now, this is for it to communicate between the the nucleus inside communicates with the cytoplasm of the cell. Now, the function is it's a control center of the cell. It stores the hereditary information, which is uh, the DNA. Chromosomes are made up of DNA. We'll do this in a lot of detail later on. And then RNA is made and protein is made. You see, the DNA contains the information to make proteins. Now that DNA information is first converted into RNA and then it goes to the cytoplasm where on the ribosome a protein is synthesized. Plus the nucleolus which is the central part here is the nucleolus it makes the ribosomes. The ribosomes which are found in the cytoplasm the free ribosomes and the fixed ribosomes those are uh, made in the nucleolus and then they are exported into the cytoplasm. Now they are found in plant and animal cells and fungal cells Nucleus is not present in bacteria. Please remember, bacteria does not have a nucleus. So no nucleus in a bacteria. But animal cells and plant cells have a nucleus. Another just how to word the answer. Uh, the function of the nucleus is to maintain the integrity of the genes, to control the activity of the cell by regulating gene expression. We have the gene for insulin, but it's only made, uh, insulin is only made in the pancreas, so that's called gene expression. Then the nucleus is the control center, and the nucleus has the directions. It has the recipe to make the proteins. Now, I know I'm giving you a little more detail than what is needed in the O levels, but I feel I must explain this to you. Uh, the DNA in the nucleus is a template, means it is the cookery book to make uh, the brownies, so that, that is in the nucleus. The DNA in the nucleus is a template. Then the mRNA copies this recipe. So the mRNA is processed and released into the cytoplasm. So you can see here, and that process is called transcription. So transcription takes place DNA to mRNA. So this process is called transcription. This takes place inside the nucleus. And the RNA then comes out and then attaches to the ribosome. And here the amino acids are brought in the right sequence. The DNA is dictating this sequence. And the amino acids are brought in the right sequence and then they are put together and a protein is made. So DNA is in the nucleus, mRNA copies that recipe of the protein, the mRNA moves out into the cytoplasm, binds to the ribosomes and then of course we have something known as tRNAs which carry the amino acids to the mRNA and then there is the codon anticodon story which I don't want to go into and a peptide chain is transferred from the resident tRNA into the incoming tRNA and tRNA departs that's only bringing the tRNA is only the transfer RNA which is bringing the amino acids which are present in the cytoplasm which came in the food that you ate so if you had an omelette you had chicken you had fish that is digested to amino acids and they enter each and every cell of your body and every cell of your body has the ribosomes where there is nucleus there has to be ribosomes naturally in the red blood cell, there is no nucleus, so there are no ribosomes. And the protein modification occurs after, you know. So the process of uh, RNA to protein is called translation. So these are the two words, transcription. DNA to RNA is transcription. And then translation. Another very simplified diagram, protein synthesis process of making proteins. Now, number one, uh, transcription, which takes place in the nucleus. So, this is here, synthesis of mRNA in the nucleus. This is the DNA, and the mRNA is being transcribed, and then you can see the mRNA is leaving the nucleus, and then it get, it get attaches to the ribosome, and then the protein is synthesized, and you can see this is the polypeptide chain, which is being made, and the amino acids are being brought here in the right sequence, and this protein molecule is being made. So, what do we say? We say ribosomes are the site of protein synthesis. Uh, now coming to section number 1.2, we have only three points in this which we need to understand very carefully. Understand that cells can become specialized and that their structures are related to their specific functions as stated by examples covered in the syllabus.
So I will cover a few examples, but I can't cover all the examples. Understand that the terms cell, tissue, organ and system and organi organism as illustrated by examples covered in the syllabus. So that's a little ambiguous. And then st state and use the formula magnification is equal to mh size over actual size. Some of you don't understand it even at the end of A-levels. And it makes me very sad because uh, this is something which everybody should be very clear. Even if you aren't clear, well, you can just Google on YouTube and look at a number of videos and clear your, uh, clear your whatever your things that you don't understand. So I'm sure I'll try my best, but I'm not sure I can reach all the students who will understand this. Now, my assumption is that either this video is being watched by a class 9 student or by a class 11 grade student who has just gone into class 11. Um, I don't think it's the grade 10 ones because they're uh, getting ready for their Park Studies in Islamiyat exam. So, I am going to try and explain it in a manner in which both the type of students can understand it. The grade 9 kid and the grade 11 kid can also understand it. Now basically what we've got to understand is that in every human being uh, there are reproductive organs where the gametes are formed. And when the gametes are formed there's a male gamete and there's a female gamete and then that fuses to form one cell the zygote. Now you see I've written N which is the haploid number of chromosomes. So whatever chromosome number is of every uh, cell in our body which is 46 chromosomes so the gametes will not have 46, they will have 23, 23. Why 23, 23? Because we have 23 pairs. We have 23 pairs of chromosomes. So one of each pair will go into the gamete. Now when that fuses at fertilization, one cell, the zygote is formed. And this zygote is then going to divide by mitosis. And every cell is going to have the same genetic information. So whatever information is in the zygote on those 46 chromosomes, the 2n is equal to 46 chromosomes, means 23 pairs. So whatever information is on those 46 chromosomes, all that information is going to go into the daughter cells. And then this divides again into, and so we will get a ball of cells. So 2 to 4, 4 to 8. Now, how does this ball of cells ultimately develop into a little human being? First of all, the zygote is going to become an embryo. And then that embryo is going to be called a fetus. And then it is going to be a human infant or a child is when it's the baby, when the fetus is born. But how do this one cell ultimately form a human being? This is what you've got to understand that all these cells, this ball of cells can be specialized. They can divide into any organ of the body. So some of the cells may be these cells will form the heart, maybe these cells will form the pancreas, maybe these cells will form the liver, maybe this part will form the limbs, the arms and the legs of the human being. So all these cells have the potential to specialize. Your syllabus says how they are specialized to develop into different organs and we've got to start with cell, tissue, organ and system. So this is the first, the beginning which you've got to understand is why are we talking about specialized cells? This is the most important topic which should be clear to everybody is specialized cells. How this ball of cells is ultimately going to develop into a human being. Now the same story happens in the plants. We'll talk about that when we study plant reproduction. But I just wanted to give you the introduction to this topic. So basically it all starts from one cell and then those cells divide and form mitosis. And then all those cells which have the same structure and function. I said same structure and function so if they have the same structure and function then they are called a tissue and then many tissues so many tissues present in organs many tissues will combine to form an organ right and many organs will then form a system and then will be systems and then they will be an organism so cell is the basic unit and then lots of different tissues Cells which have the same uh, same uh, structure and the same function will be called, say, one tissue. Say we have muscle tissue. So there's muscle tissue everywhere in the body. We have muscles in the wall of the arteries. We have muscles, biceps muscle, triceps muscle. We have muscles in the wall of the stomach. So they will all have the same structure and function. And basically their function is to contract and relax. So then many tissues, muscle tissue plus neural tissue, nervous tissue plus 
blood tissue plus uh, circulatory uh, capillaries, arteries, veins, all will form an organ. And then many organs will form a system. Now, looking at this uh, very nice uh, diagram, you can see the organs are what? The organs are the leaf is an organ, stem is an organ, and the root is an organ. But then look at the tissue that they are made up of. Cuticle, epidermis, parasite, mesophyll, xylem phloem, vascular tissue, spongy mesophyll, epidermis. In the stem, you have the epidermis, which is the dermal tissue, cortex is the brown tissue, thick. Uh, xylophone, vascular tissue, root hair, dermal tissue, epidermis, cortex epidermis, endodermis, subtile sacs, and xylem phloem. So, a very good example of showing you the organs, and I also want you to look at the names which are very important to you here the petiole, the blade, the apical bud, the lateral bud, leaf. This is basic biology. It's grade 9, they should have done this. Stem, then the node, where another branch comes off, and then between two such areas, that's called the internode. I would still like you to know this because that's the, the important uh, biological terms which I always want you to remember. Then the root, the root apex, the root cap, then the root hairs, main root, lateral roots. Just, just names that you must know, and not necessarily everything's in the syllabus saying you have to say. This is it in the syllabus, and I say, no, it's not in the syllabus, but you've got to know, you must know this. Now, let's look at another few diagrams which will help you understand this. Now, as you can see here, it's again similar cells make up a tissue and leaf palisade tissue, and then plant cell, and then leaf, and then stem, which are all then come into organs. Then another uh, very nice diagram to show you this uh, organelle, which is the smallest unit. Then organelle, chloroplast, then a cell, then tissue, then organ, and then the system. Then another very good example. Now here are another levels of organization. First atoms, then molecules, then cells, then tissues, and organs, and systems, and then organism. Now Cells are the building blocks of life, group of similar cells working together form a tissue. So similar cells working together form a tissue. Organ is made up of different tissues working together. Organs working together from systems, form systems. Then another one here, muscle cell, then tissue, organ, system, and organism. And this is the last one in which we can see a whole lot of them, uh, in which we can see different ones. And of course, you can pause the video here and go through all these. Uh, this is now the main thing, which is our cells, organ system, and organism. Now coming to the most ill-understood part, which is uh, magnification, important magnification terms. Magnification, the ratio of the size of the image to the size of the object. A uh, scale bar, a short line. This is a scale bar. You can see here, this is a scale bar here. So the scale bar is a short line usually drawn in micrograph to show the magnification. Magnification means that whatever length this is, say this is 1.5 centimeter, then in the actual diagram, this is equal to 2 micrometer. So it is 1.5 centimeter. It is 2 micrometer which means 1.5 centimeter is equal to 15 millimeter is equal to 15,000 micrometer, but it's actually two micrometers. So if you divide this by two, this will give you the magnification because it's actually two micrometer, but it's actually 15,000 that in the diagram is 15,000 times. So this is how you have to calculate the magnification. Then another diagram. Now this is a favorite triangle which we use very often. I know some of you understand it. Some of you don't feel, seem to understand it. I don't know why we are having problems with this. So the actual size. So if you put, if you've been given the uh, actual size, then you have to image over magnification. If you have to calculate this. Let me just put a, put a stop here. Actual size is image over magnification. Now, if you have to calculate the magnification, then it is image over actual. Right? But then remember, it has to be in the same 
uh, units uh, which you have to convert. Then here another very easy way of doing it. Um, M stands for magnification. This is calculated by dividing the image size by the object actual size. So magnification is equal to image over actual. So this is the thing that you have to calculate. Then if you find out the image that is magnification into the original size. O stands for the ob object's actual size. So either you can do this or then if you want uh, the I stands for the image. This can be calculated by multiplying the object with the magnification. So object with the magnification. So this will give you the image magnification into object. Right? Object stands for, let me explain this to you once again. If you want to find out the magnification, it is image divided by actual. Right? If you want to find out uh, object or the actual size of the object, then what are you going to do? You have to divide the image by the magnification. If you want to find out the object size, O is the object size or the actual size. Then you have to do is image over the magnification, right? And the last one, if you have to find out the I, you have to find out the image size. This is calculated by multiplying the magnification with the actual size. So image is multiplying the object's actual size by the then we come into another worked example. Uh, you measure this bacteria. It is 80 millimeter. Plug it into the formula. Actual size is measured length of magnification 80 millimeter over 90,000. And for x, this will be this will be the answer. Convert it to appropriate units. This is how. This is a worked example that I want you to look at. Another worked example: a sperm has a tail that is 50 micrometer long. A student draws it, draws it as 75 millimeter. You don't have to draw it, but you can help. That helps. Actual size measured length over this thing. So 75 over X is equal to 50 micrometer. And so this is how you have to find out and it's 1500 times it's been magnified. So I always divide it, change it to the same units. You can't have millimeter or you can't have, so you have to convert it all into micrometer. Uh, another worked example, squamous epithelial cell. So you measure the length of one cell is 50 millimeter is 50,000 micrometer magnification is 1200 that's given in the question and this is how you calculated it. So I hope this is now helps you all in the uh, magnification story and if it's still not clear please go on to uh, YouTube and look at some videos how to calculate it but please get this clear. By the time you are uh, in A-levels, I don't want this to still be an issue. Uh, well, if you decide to do A-level biology. Uh, so thank you very much once again and uh, wish you all the very best. And inshallah, see you for the next chapter very soon when I will be uploading that video. Thank you very much.